So you're planning to start a digital agency business. Well, if you are, then having a business plan is a must. And I know you hear online that nobody needs a business plan, et cetera, et cetera. And I agree, you don't need a 50 page business plan. You're not trying to get a bank loan. But in today's video, I wanna boil down the way that I think about businesses and how you can create a one page business plan, which covers everything that you need, all the logical steps you need to go through in order to ensure that your business is worth your time. Who am I? I'm Alex Berman, author of Cold Email Manifesto, and I run a suite of companies, everything from X27, which is a lead gen business, to Lead Shark, our lead database, Taplio, which is an AI content creation tool, and a ton more. And all of these are businesses that we committed to by thinking through all of these questions, whether they were on paper or they were thought through in person-to-person -person conversations or they were thought through alone, just in, in my head here. <laughs> these questions were tackled in some way throughout the development of every business that we've done. So let's jump into the business plan and walk through each of these sections. And that brings us to the first section, which is vision. This section will articulate the hopes and dreams for your business. You can write a vision statement if you want, but what you basically want to do is answer these four questions. What are you building? Is it a lead generation agency? Is it a software? What is it that you're building? What do you see this business becoming in five years? If everything goes well and you're working on this for five years, do you see it growing? Is it in a growing market? Are you selling to a market that you think is going to increase over time or decrease over time? If you're selling, let's say, Amazon Alexa apps, then I would say that's decreasing because people aren't really buying those anymore and they'll buy less in the future. But if it's something like crypto NFT projects, then that could increase in the future. So where do you see this going in five years and does your business still make sense in five years? That's worth answering here. The next one is how do you plan on growing the business and to what degree? Is this something that you want to just get as a lifestyle business, maybe earn an extra thousand dollars on the side, or maybe get it up to 10K a month? Or is it something that you want to hire a team for? Is it something that has world changing potential and you want to go for unicorn status? What do you actually want to do with this business? It all exists in your head right now. So even if something seems scary, like going for a billion dollars, I would implore you to consider that more because those big ideas are the ones that'll have massive impact. Because if you run at a billion dollar idea, then you might stumble into a multi-million dollar idea, fail at hitting the billion and still end up rich. So I always think that we should go bigger rather than smaller. And you always end up in a lower spot than you aim for anyway. So like if you aim for 2000 signups, you'll get seven, 800. If you aim for $2 million, you'll get seven to 800,000, right? So think about it like that. Always aim bigger than you want to go, expecting that you might get 50% or less of your goal and still being happy beyond reason with whatever you end up with. And the last part of the vision section is why are you building this? Why you? Why this business? What makes this important to you? For Taplio, our entire purpose of this is I see all these people running social media agencies. They're all ripping off their clients. Social media barely works. It's not fun. So with Taplio, we want to remove all of that. Let's remove the scam of the agency that's just using Canva to design stuff and selling it for a 12x or maybe a 100x markup. Let's make social media actually profitable for people so people are able to generate more leads on social media. And let's make it fun so that it's not so boring and soul crushing. Why is LinkedIn the worst social media platform? on earth. Let's make it better. And that's my why. What is your why for building your business? That's what you would write right here. Then the next section is the business overview, which some might call the mission statement. But if that demoralizes you, then you don't need to actually write mission statement. I know vision statement and mission statement have both been like massaged to the point, needed to the point that they're not even like bread dough anymore. Like they're gone. We don't need to deal with that. So if you don't want to call it a mission statement, that's fine. It's a business statement. This is the overview of your business and should describe how you tend to achieve what you have in mind for the business. For example, what service will you provide? Basic question that should be answered. Is it Facebook ads management? Is it copywriting? What are you providing? Who is your target market? Who will buy your services? And it can't be everyone. And the more specific you get, the better. For Taplio, our target market are sales teams and HR teams that want to grow on LinkedIn and are currently active on LinkedIn in some way. Your Target market should be that specific. And the more specific it is, then the easier it will be to answer the next question, which is where does your target market hang out? SDRs and sales teams hang out on LinkedIn. 
and they hang out in their email and they hang out at certain sales conferences. Where does your target market hang out? You can only really answer that once you know what they are. Then we move into the benefit section, which is how does your service help them make more money or save more time? Like I know you wanna offer web design, but if you really wanna be successful in web design, first, who are you selling web design for? So let's say it's like web design for the manufacturing industry. Okay, how does building a new website for this manufacturer help them make more money or save more time? And if you can't answer that, then you either need to change what you're selling, change the market, or think harder. Then the final question of this section is, how will you provide your services? Are you hiring someone else to do the work? Are you doing the work yourself? What's going on behind the scenes to pull this off? And it can be simple or complex. It could be as simple as, I will hire people on Upwork to do the work for me. Or it could be as complex as Bill, my friend from four years ago, is the one that's gonna fulfill all this work and I have to reach out to him tomorrow to book that meeting. It could be simple or complex, whatever you wanna do here. Then we move into the pricing strategy, which is one question, how much will you charge for your service? That's it. You wanna make your pricing competitive enough to attract customers, but be high enough to generate a profit. When we think about offer creation, it should be stupid easy for them to say yes to you and it should feel like stealing. Once you've done this part of the business plan, you now have enough information to write a one sentence business plan, which is structured like this. We help target audience solve problem by solution and we reach them via distribution system. And I'll give you some examples. We help education companies solve low sales and we reach them via existing platforms. Our product costs $2,000 to set up, then 2,000 a month. We help plumbers solve low sales. We reach them via cold calling and our product costs $2,000 one time. You want to boil this entire half of the page down into that one sentence. I wanna know who you're selling to, what's the problem you solve, what's the pricing, and how are you reaching those customers all in one sentence using the one sentence business plan. So go out there and write that yourself. Then you can move on to the next part, which is the objectives. And these objectives are your goals for the organization. So you can list out your metrics for success by time frame and just set up your goals. So here are some examples. Capture 20% of the local market share by year end. Gain 25 steady customers in the first six months of operation. And you might want to make that a little more aggressive or less aggressive depending on how you think you're going to be able to achieve it. I always lean towards more aggressive because like I said in the beginning of the video, you can miss a more aggressive goal and still end up ahead. So I would bet that the person who's trying to gain 25 steady customers in the first six months and the person that's trying to gain 250 customers in the first six months, same exact experience, same exact business, I would say the second one ends up with more customers by the end of the six months. And the only difference is that they added a zero to their goal. It could also be a profit goal, like earn a net income of $50,000 for the first fiscal year. And you could even break that down into per month, $50,000 is about $4,200 a month. And then you have the action plans, which is where you describe how you're going to hit each goal. What is the date by which the offer is nailed down? What's the date that the payment processor is selected? What's the date that you have all of the weekly and daily tasks listed out for the first six months? What is the date when the website's going live? What's the date when the first cold emails or cold calls are getting made? Have that all listed out and hold yourself accountable to your deadlines. The most important part of these five is the weekly and daily tasks, which basically should highlight what you're gonna do every single day. While you're hyped up for a business, the best way to use that motivation is to build out task lists that you can then execute on even when you're not so motivated. So for instance, when we launched Taplio, we knew that in order to hit our number, we needed to send emails to the list and send certain tweets and reach out to certain people. Now, instead of just having those broad strokes, we actually had tweets written, we had the emails written, we knew the exact people that we were going to reach out to, and we had them in a Google Sheet that we tracked the outreach on. And so when we were on day six of the launch and we couldn't even really think straight, we knew that we just had to look at this Excel sheet and do the thing that the Excel sheet told us to do without making any changes or shifting things around. And guess what? We hit our goal. We doubled our MRR within 24 hours and we continued to grow after that. Taplio launch was an amazing success. And it was due to the fact that we had everything mapped out 
so that we didn't lose focus during the launch. If you want to be part of a community of awesome people and talk to me every single week about how to grow your business, then check out email10k.com. It also comes with access to all of our courses on how to grow a business. And if you want this business plan for free, then click the link in the description down below. Would love to share this with you. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to smash that like button to encourage this type of content on YouTube. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex Berman.